Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, <laughs> first, of all, first of starting, I would like to thank uh, Inanna of the University of Cambridge and uh, also uh, Professor uh, Pauletti uh, for the opportunity to take part uh, to this uh, symposium. Um, for me, it's, it's very um, a privilege uh, being here um, and talk about one of the most uh, influential artists and uh, engineers um, in the modern era. Uh, my name is uh, Nicola. I'm uh, the director of uh, uh, AKT2 uh, Cambridge office. AKT2 is uh, structural engineering practice uh, with uh, the headquarters in uh, London. Uh, we are uh, 350 people and we recently um, have opened an office in uh, Cambridge, made of five people at the moment. Uh, we have been involved uh, in uh, a lot of uh, buildings, a lot of uh, iconic buildings, especially in London, but also um, around the world. Um, so my presentation today will be mainly focused on um, the engineering aspect of uh, Leonardo da Vinci and uh, how his uh, legacy is still influencing our work uh, of engineer and how his artistic approach has contributed to the progression of engineering. Uh, this is the right direction <laughs> of the title. Um, I must say that uh, uh, one of the most difficult things for me on this presentation was uh, uh, how to uh, start the, talking about the subject because it's quite a uh, wide subject. And um, um, I started with uh, some words coming from uh, uh, Zadid, who, is, uh, who was uh, one of the most influential architects and artists of our contemporary time. And uh, uh, this one gave me the possibility to link uh, almost 2,000 years of history in architecture from uh, Vitruvius, Leonardo da Vinci, and then projects uh, of Zadid, uh, where AKT2 has been involved. The first one is uh, Idealir, a uh, cultural center in uh, Baku, Azerbaijan. And the second one is uh, La Pella Chair, uh, quite different project from the first one, and there is a chair made of uh, stone and carbon fiber. Um, the common um, theme of these uh, uh, three times uh, is uh, the uh, research of, uh, um, uh, of proportion, which is common in every engineering project. Proportion not only uh, from a geometric point of view, but also uh, con uh, proportion in also in uh, the environmental and social context. Um, Leonardo was one of the um, one of the um, symbols of the Renaissance period, which is, uh, was quite a very rich uh, period, as we know, um, which started with the invention of uh, uh, Gutenberg and uh, the press machine, and uh, um, also the discovery of uh, America uh, by Columbus. Um, the, um, the discovery of Gutenberg changed radically the way of communication, of the time and allow it also for uh, um, uh, a much easier way of circulation of information. And it seems that uh, there is an important, uh, uh, important similarities between uh, the Renaissance period and our period. And uh, what I want to point out mostly on uh, the beginning of the computer, which is now 1440, uh, it's 1944. And, uh, and um, also the, the moon landing uh, by Neil Armstrong in 1969. Um, the, again, in this case, the use of uh, uh, the computer brought uh, um, a lot of uh, change of the way we communicated, change also um, the way the information uh, was fl is flowing, and uh, change also the way of computing. Um, <coughs> The change of communication in, uh, in the Renaissance period um, uh, changed also uh, ch changed the way uh, engineering was carried out. Um, uh, previously, before the change, uh, before the Gutenberg period, uh, the engineering was mainly based on physical models, 
um, in the Renaissance period we see uh, the drawings uh, being heavily used. And so we can say that uh, Leonardo da Vinci was a son, or was a product of uh, uh, this era. And uh, the same thing we can say with uh, in our modern era. Our modern era is called information era. And uh, 882 is uh, a song of the uh, discoveries which have been done uh, from the Second World War up to our days. Um, the invention of final element uh, uh, analysis, um, the invention of uh, cross bracing, which allows us to build um, tall uh, and taller buildings. Unfortunately, we learn also from uh, uh, mistakes uh, or uh, uh, dramatic consequences like Ronan Point in uh, the collapse of the, of the balcony in Ronan Point in 69. And today, because of this invention, engineering has uh, changed dramatically. And now structural engineer uh, has a lot of tools uh, which he can use. He can use uh, um, computational software. He can use geometrical software. He can use a lot of data. Actually, the current period is called big data period. He can use uh, uh, visualization software like we say, we talked about before, about uh, virtual reality. And uh, also other software may, are not related to uh, potentially to such engineering, but are uh, used a lot in our sector, which are environmental uh, software, which are very important, especially in this video where we place sustainability uh, as uh, one of the key roles in our design. So we say that uh, um, someone, uh, the science writer uh, Stefan Klein, defines uh, Leonardo da Vinci as the first engineer of a modern area. His intuition and ingenuity are two fundamental aspects of Leonardo's legacy uh, for us as uh, engineers. Uh, the intuition is able on a five cutting machine compared to what it is in these days. We mentioned the intuition of a helicopter, where at this time it was impossible to think about a man being able to fly. And also, the, I found the, <laughs> I didn't know this one before, um, the study for a revol revolving crane. <coughs> very similar to what uh, we're using today in the construction site. Um, in our sector, uh, the, um, the capacity of being ingenious is uh, tested almost all the time. And one example is this uh, uh, bridge called the Anderson Way Bridge, which is in Singapore, which span over seven pillars. And uh, um, the shape, uh, this one connects to what uh, Federico was saying before, um, is, uh, its shape uh, is uh, um, represented by a very complex uh, um, mathematical equation. And, uh, and there's been more representing this uh, technical drawing and then model through uh, some finite element analysis. And uh, uh, then, like in Leonardo era, even tested uh, with uh, hand models here, done uh, not only from an aesthetic point of view, but also to understand the installation process, and then tested here um, from a, a for a calculation analysis as well, in order to obtain uh, one of uh, a very uh, good result, um, not only from an aesthetic point of view, but also from an uh, installation point of view. Basically, um, this, uh, this uh, project here, this simple project here, shows that uh, um, Leonardo approach to um, to the, um, the Leonardo approach is still uh, alive here because we started for observation of the constraints, opportunity of the surrounding environment. Then we went to a preparation of drawings with end calculation as well. And then we use also a physical model to, to prove uh, that our faults were right. And then we went for uh, an installation and construction uh, process, as you can see 
in this case, we, even we, we decide to use very sustainable material coming directly <coughs> from uh, Singapore. And this is the ultimate result. But there's another thing that, uh, um, uh, another aspect that uh, accommodates Leonardo to uh, the current engineering is also the curiosity and fair time mind regarding science and technology. Uh, what, uh, what surprised me is that uh, the discovery of Leonardo da Vinci as a great inventor uh, is quite recent and uh, only, um, only until the 19th century he was only known as a painter and the thousand of pages of writing sketches started to resurface only in the 19th century as they were owned by um, private owners. An example of the Mat uh, Madrid Codex uh, was only discovered in the 60s. Um, these codes are the proof of Leonardo, of a Leonardo curiosity and uh, uh, towards uh, science and technology from uh, uh, military weapons um, to striking mechanisms, clocks, and uh, um, even there is one of the sketch, uh, one of the other sketches show a uh, robot plane, uh, the drums, and uh, this one is the, um, uh, the construction of, of uh, this sketch in the current era. Um, the, uh, the curiosity to, towards new technology uh, is also belongs to engineers in, the, in this era, and uh, the demonstration is the. Uh, uh, the Serpentine Pavilion, uh, which we designed in 2016. Um, for this event, uh, we offer a structural design to uh, an idea uh, coming from uh, big architects, uh, which wanted to show an unzipped wall made of glass fiber reinforced uh, plastic, which is uh, a quite recent uh, uh, material. Uh, the development uh, started, uh, this is the interior, the final. Uh, picture of a uh, pavilion and uh, its design started from uh, just uh, two simple lines um, on a plan then we went for an horizontal defining the maximum height of a building and then we went to define the lateral surface of the pavilion and these studies were done to complete the opera as uh, it is on the right hand side this was the concept idea, the starting concept idea of the pavilion in 2016. Then we went for a, um, a structural calculation with the um, finite element software of a global model, but also uh, of a single, every single part of it uh, which made the, the structure. As you can see here, uh, this is a result output of a, of a uh, calculation model. This is the complexity we are talking about, where this one shows an integrated workflow from the input geometry, which uh, we saw before, going through the uh, calculation, and then this one are the product information, which allows the, uh, um, the contractor to build the, uh, the site. This is, uh, 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 the lab where the, the concrete boxes were made and assembled. We even tested the concrete boxes here. Uh, uh, we compare our uh, theoretical calculation with uh, uh, the test, the real test coming from site. And only once we found out how we we match uh, our calculation with the te uh, test results from the lab, we uh, started the production of the, uh, the um, uh, glass reinforced uh, boxes. Yeah. This was the site before the installation, and this is the installation on site yeah. to give uh, this. Uh, uh, Magnificent, uh, magnificent uh, presence. Uh, again, this one is, uh, um, it follows more or less what uh, uh, Leonardo um, was doing. Again, it was uh, uh, developing our geometry, uh, curiosity of uh, new materials, and then uh, drawings, calculation, and then uh, installation of a, 
ovaj straciju. Another thing that a particular aspect of Leonardo da Vinci is the that is is an artist, an all in engineer. Um, and this work uh, was uh, distinguished from what uh, his contemporaries uh, were doing. Um, the reason why is because he saw science and art not as a opposite, but uh, as allies. He was uh, then able to bridge the two worlds. From uh, one side, the arts, from the other one, the engineering. Thanks to his ability to draw using new techniques. Um, there is a, a, a Professor Jim Bennett, from, uh, uh, who was a previous director of the Museum of History at uh, uh, Oxford University, defines Leonardo as uh, an artist engineer. Um, in our days, it's quite common for uh, structural engineers to work with uh, artists, as you can see from this uh, exhibition in, uh, of Louis Vuitton at uh, Selfridges. Um, it's not commercial art. Please. <laughs> As, uh, uh, at the time, Leonard, um, uh, Louis Vuitton uh, commissioned um, a Japanese artist called Kusama, who um, expo uh, uh, exhibited his wo uh, work in uh, Avetate Modern in London, uh, commissioned her uh, to create a temporary pop up store in uh, Selfridges. Uh, Kusama is very, uh, a very well-known artist, especially uh, because uh, she used the uh, colorful polka dots and also because uh, she often used also um, pumpkins, uh, which are uh, the symbol of growth and fertility. In this case, um, due to the uh, temporary uh, nature of the store, we had to uh, come out with an idea who was uh, um, easy to install, lightweight for transportation, and was able also to represent what the uh, artist wanted to show. Um, so we can uh, what we prepare are um, light uh, um, um, a light carbon fiber shells here, which we studied uh, before uh, producing them with again with the final element models and uh, uh, which offer actually a lightweight uh, solution. Uh, these uh, these uh, carbon fiber are not very, uh, very common to use uh, in a construction um, sector. They are more uh, used in aeronautical or uh, uh, ship industries. But thanks to this new technology and new material, we are able uh, to merge art engineering, like a bill as Leonardo was doing in his era. This is the final result of the Louis Vuitton uh, exhibition. Um, the definition of Leonardo da Vinci as uh, an artist engineer fits perfectly uh, with uh, him being a multi-talent uh, person. Um, he draw allegories. He also was busy uh, drawing grotesque portrait. He was uh, um, studying uh, the anatomy of the human body. He was also um, uh, very curious about cartography. Here is uh, one the map of Imola in Italy. Uh, he was studying the monument, uh, the horse monument, uh, monument of Tribuzio and they did some initial study for the Dome of Milan. So it was, uh, uh, his interest were uh, almost 360 degrees interest. Um, this is what uh, we are required today as a structural engineer to be, to have a, a, no, a, a niche uh, knowledge, uh, but more a, a knowledge which uh, uh, can also deal with other expertise. And uh, <coughs> uh, so, uh, sometimes we are uh, called to, um, to uh, develop some master plan. This is one of the uh, um, recent master plan we have finished uh, in uh, uh, near Canary Wharf. It's called Woodworth. 
is uh, uh, the new urban district next uh, uh, so, uh, south of uh, Canary Wharf and uh, is, uh, um, is made of more than uh, 30 buildings which uh, with uh, mixed use and uh, in this case um, um, when we are involved in these uh, uh, kind of projects not only buildings but uh, much wider uh, our knowledge stretches uh, from uh, um, not only a planning point of view but also a construction point of view point of view as well um, as you can see in this image so uh, think about also logistics on site and uh, uh, infrastructure as well so we are required to uh, give uh, um, uh, more answers not only from a structural engineering point of view but what actually our, uh, our uh, we need to also to be careful what the can our input input on uh, on the structure can be on the master plan and um, we need to know about uh, uh, wind um, currently an example every uh, developer in london uh, needs also to satisfy some requirements about wind comfort and also we uh, need also to study uh, the solar exposure of a new development this one for daylight studies and uh, um, solar radiation analysis which uh, after can be also helpful <coughs> in the study of the thermal comfort of the environment and also of a single building so the last uh, chapter i want to talk about uh, uh, now we are talking about uh, uh, leonardo da vinci his legacy and uh, his future um, this is a, a, a tricky, uh, both ways tricky but easy question as well. Um, uh, actually, Leonardo was thinking when he was uh, um, thinking about engineering, um, a lot of his works have come from uh, observation of nature. The reason why is because I was thinking God and nature was the perfect engineer so uh, we had to learn from uh, and we, we needed to try to replicate uh, from what we had uh, on our sites and this is why it was uh, um, spending a lot of time uh, observing um, phenomena of nature like an example the flow or, uh, as uh, uh, Federico said before um, in the same way uh, I think uh, this is uh, a challenge that uh, we are going to have in the next uh, uh, years. Uh, as engineers, we need to have a look at uh, uh, nature and uh, uh, we need to try to replicate uh, uh, what we have already um, in front of us. Um, and the sustainability, obviously, is the key. It's becoming the key of our design, uh, being able to uh, design a sustainable um, uh, project and uh, an adaptable project as well. Uh, the project you see here is a project was done is a, a project was done in 2010, so quite a lot of time ago. But it was uh, um, has been a focal uh, point for our company as uh, as um, change our way of designing and our way we approach uh, um, structural design, uh, not only looking at the uh, structure of the building but in a holistic way. Uh, the project Mazda uh, was uh, uh, commissioned by um, uh, the Mazda Institute of Science and Technology, which was concerned with uh, exploring the efficient generation of clean energy uh, with the aim of placing Abu Dhabi at the front of energy saving and technology. From a structural point of view, um, we um, we were focused on, um, this is the plan of the building, we were focused on um, providing a sustainable design, a structural design. So the uh, structure of the building has been um, designed in such a way uh, to give, the, to take the most of the benefits of the thermal mass, um, 
especially in a, a very um, difficult condition like uh, in the desert. And, uh, but also the buildings were, uh, were positioned in a such a way uh, to um, minimize energy consumption, as you can see from uh, these uh, maps. Yeah. And uh, um, the building itself was uh, um, the, uh, were also uh, um, the, layout, the architectural layout and then the structural layout were also designed in such a way that uh, um, the, the buildings are quite versatile with, uh, and they are uh, easy to adapt uh, to different needs. Um, this is a, a flexibility is an important concept that uh, um, is uh, um, is uh, is um, is driving the design of a new generation of buildings. As you can see here, uh, we have some um, uh, pictures of a um, of different uh, um, thermal um, performance of a structure. And this one is the uh, one of the uh, render uh, of, a, of the building. Facade as well was uh, designed in such a way to implement the natural ventilation of building, and also the curvature and the geometry of a of a facade was important in this study. And the internal um, the internal layout of a building was done in such a way that uh, it can accept different kinds of usages. The buildings were uh, designed for both uh, academic use and uh, residential use as well. Obviously, uh, photovoltaic uh, panels on the top were uh, one of the um, uh, characteristics of the building. And also uh, uh, being down concentrated solar panel as well. Yeah. And uh, the use of PV panels and also linoleum for uh, flooring uh, to benefit from uh, uh, the thermal mass. As I said, uh, sustainability and, uh, is one of the um, uh, main points of uh, um, design of buildings, of, of the developer in general, and uh, is uh, um, one of our goals, uh, uh, as you can see, uh, set up by the United Nations for the 2030 agenda. Our, uh, our new buildings are uh, trying to um, to achieve uh, these uh, uh, these objects, um, uh, um, we got an example. One of them is the Oslo Airport, the extension of this um, uh, of the airport done only with uh, timber material. The case. Now uh, uh, we got also the, uh, the latest one of our latest projects is Bloomberg Quarter, which achieve uh, ex uh, Brium excellent, so very sustainable. Um, uh, achieving uh, natural ventilation, as you can see from uh, the diagram here. This is our um, office in London. We are using thermal heating uh, cast within uh, the slab to achieve the uh, maximum from a uh, thermal mass given from a uh, from a concrete. And <laughs> that's it. <laughs>